Good morning, Year 3. Happy Friday. Now, we're going to continue with our English today. We have looked at all the plot points to do with My Name Is Not Refugee, and now is your turn to plan your story. Now, we are only planning today, and we're going to start writing next week, so don't write as well, just do the plan. Now, you'll find on Teams that there is a planning template. If you are able to print this off before the lesson, it'll be really helpful for you to be able to. If not, try and draw something similar on a piece of paper to help you with your story. So this is what you will have um, in your on your books, hopefully, or printed out for me. We've done something really similar to this before in school. We've got our plot points along the bottom. We draw pictures of what's going to happen at each point, and then we do our plotting of our graph. But we'll go through each point all together on this video. So your first point is that you have been told that you need to leave your home. Now, this is your opportunity to do something a little bit different. If you don't want to do it as a refugee, maybe you want to do it um, a set during World War II, you want to do it as an evacuee child. Maybe you've got a completely different idea why you need to leave your home. But for some reason, you have to leave because it is unsafe. I don't mind what that is. It's your opportunity to be creative. So in your first plot point, what I'd like you to do is to draw a picture of why you have to leave your home. Maybe there's something in the background that tells you and also who tells you you have to leave. So pause the video here. We'll spend about five or ten minutes or so drawing that picture and then come back to me and we'll have a look at what the second picture needs to be about. OK, so hopefully you've all drawn your lovely pictures of why you have to leave your home. Let's have a look at our second plot point. So our second plot point is that we are going to go and say goodbye. Now, in our story, the little boy said goodbye to his friends. He gave him a hug. He saw his um, old house and said goodbye. Who are you having to say goodbye to? If you're an evacuee child, are you having to say goodbye to your parents? Are you saying goodbye to your pets? Are you saying goodbye to your friends as well? What is your situation? Why you've had to leave? And then who would you say goodbye to? So in your second plot point, can you draw your picture of who you say goodbye to and maybe make it really obvious about how you are feeling about this situation as well? Pause the video and come back to me for plot point three. OK, so let's have a look at our third plot point for me. So this time it is all about how you are traveling. Now, in our story, the little boy had to walk and walk and walk and walk and walk. And he kept walking for days and days and days to get to where he um, to get to the boat. How are you going to travel? Is yours slightly different? Again, going on the evacuation people, they traveled by train. So are you having to be dropped off at the train station and travel? Are you also walking? Are you travelling by cycling somewhere? Are you lucky enough to be able to have a car to travel somewhere? Whatever way it is that you are travelling, that's what you need to draw in your third plot point for me. And then also, could you put some words around the outside of how long it took? It's probably going to be a really, really long journey. So what kind of words could you use? So again, another five or ten minutes to draw your third plot point and then come back for number four. OK, so hopefully you've all managed to draw all your different ways of travelling. Let's have a look at our fourth plot point. So you are now going to be travelling on a different form of transport. So remember in our story, he travelled, um, he had to walk all that way. And then when he got there, he then had to, um, he managed to get a ship. You can travel on a ship if you'd like to, or you might be lucky enough to be able to travel on a plane somewhere. Or maybe you have to change different mode of transport. But on this picture, what I'd like you to focus on is what you can see when you are near to the new country that you're going to or near to the new place you're going to. So focus almost on drawing a landscape picture on all the things that you can see. And hopefully it might be quite different to the um, first picture that you had of what was in the background as well. So five, ten minutes. What can you see from your ship or your plane? Off you go. OK, let's have a look at the fifth plot point for me. So you've now got to your different home, your different country, your different place, whatever it's going to be. And there is going to be something different about it. I've given you the example here that there is a different cuisine, a different food that you've got to get used to. Is it a different climate? Is it really hot when you're used to being really cold or vice versa? What is different about this place? And it's something that at first you really don't like. 
So in your fifth box, can you draw for me what is different? You might be a couple of different things that you're going to talk about in this paragraph for me, please. Five, 10 minutes, off you go, guys. Okay, let's have a look at our last plot point. So the last plot point is very similar to what we have written about yesterday in our story. And this is where you finally feel safe. It's taken a little bit of a time to adapt to it, but you are now safe. So what might be going on in your picture that shows you're safe? Have you got a new clean house? Are you away from that war zone? Have you got your own bedroom for the first time? Whatever it is that makes you as your character feel safe. So can you spend five or 10 minutes drawing that plot point in your book and then come back because we have something else to do afterwards. Okay, so hopefully we have got all of these different sections now filled in. You've told me um, that you, you've had to leave, you've said goodbye to something, you've had to walk for the first time. What can you see when you're traveling on the ship or the plane? How is this place different? You don't like it. And then finally feeling safe. Okay, so now what I'd like you to do is to start thinking about plotting your emotions. So remember, this needs to change as we go through. So there's a highs and lows to our story. So this is just an example of how I would feel when I'm writing the story, how the emotions are going to go in mine. So at the beginning, I'm going to be really, really sad that I've had to leave my town. I'm then going to get slightly happier when I have to say goodbye because I want to put on a great brave face. When I'm walking, I'm really fed up, so it's really low. Traveling on the ship, I'm really excited to see all of the different things. This is my first like really high plot point moment. When I get to have to eat the different food, I don't like it at all, so it goes down again. And then at the end, I really feel safe, so I'm very happy. Yours might be slightly different. You might decide that when you're getting told to leave, in fact, you're actually quite happy because you're having to get out of the place that you're in, or maybe you enjoy walking. Maybe when you're saying goodbye, you're a little bit happier because you want to um, say goodbye to your friends and you're excited to see them or something like that. So pause the video here for me. Can you plot your emotions for each of those different plot points? Okay, so the very last thing that I'd now like you to do, we are going to think about some key lenses that we are going to use in our story. So these are the lenses that we have been focusing on in, um, in our writing. So we've got feeling, action, adverbial phrases, um, speech, pathetic fallacy and metaphor. Just getting that so they line up a little bit better. Now you have got six plot points and you have got six lenses. So we've done this before. What I'd like you to do is to choose when you are going to use each of those lenses in which plot point. So if we go back to this one, we might decide that we are definitely going to use our pathetic fallacy when we are walking. So I will, um, I will draw or I will write um, pathetic fallacy next to my plot point here. So that's the first thing you need to do is decide which one of those success criteria you are going to do at each plot point. So do that for me and then come back to me afterwards as well, please. Okay, so we've all had an opportunity to choose where those lenses are going to go. Now remember, that doesn't mean that you can only do a pathetic fallacy in whichever one you've put it in. You can do it in one of the other ones as well, but just make sure you definitely use it in the plot point you've said you're going to. Now to make your writing even easier, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to write a sentence with one of those, um, with one of those lenses that you could use in your story later on. So you can either do this on your emotions grid, or if you want to find a separate piece of paper and write them down, it is absolutely fine. Now, next to your picture and your plot point, you are now going to write the sentence that you could use in your story. So for example, when I'm walking, I want it to show that it's really sad and I want it to start raining. So I'm going to write my example here now. As we were walking, whoosh, the clouds or the grey clouds um, surrounded us 
um, all, um, all of a sudden, the heavens opened and the rain poured down. So that is my pathetic fallacy there. It is showing my uh, how the how the um, the weather is mirroring how the character feels. So I will just pop that underneath there. If I had chosen to do feelings here, I'll put my feeling next to it, and then I might write my feelings above it as well. So that's what you need to try and do. If you can't fit it in on the on the um, grid that you've made, just use a separate piece of paper. But make sure you're focusing on that lens. What could you write? for that lens with that plot point for me. That's all you need to do today. So when you finish that, that is your lesson over for today and move on to something else. And on Monday, we will start writing our stories. Have a lovely weekend, guys, and I will see you soon.